हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर अंकुर सिंगाला सेकंड ईयर रेडियो रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर फ्रॉम सीयूसा मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल सुरेंद्र नगर आई एम प्रेजेंटिंग अ पेपर ऑफ रोल ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड इन इवेल्युएटिंग पेलफुल शोल्डर शोल्डर अल्ट्रासाउंड हैज बीन इन यूज फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम एन एस कॉन्साइडर ऑपरेटर डिपेंडेंट एन एस प्रोवन एक्यूरेसी इन रोटेटर कप एसेसमेंट Scanning the shoulder can be challenging and time-consuming in the beginning. The use of a protocol-driven examination, understanding of anatomy, tendon orientation, and familiarity with imaging pitfalls can improve individuals' performance. This paper presents a simplified approach to scanning the shoulder and also illustrates the pathological findings. My study includes 50 patients with complaints related to shoulder. There are various techniques for scanning the shoulder. Some operators prefer to face the patient and others prefer to stand behind. It would be preferable to scan standing behind the patient and recommends following a protocol that the user is comfortable with. The probe should be held at its end with the edge of the hand resting on the patient's shoulder in order to reduce stress and allow fine motor control. Obtaining a brief history at the beginning of the examination can provide clues to the underlying pathology. Good quality ultrasound equipment and a high frequency linear array probe is required. The more the transducer frequency which approves the resolution, the less is the depth penetration. Probe frequency selection depends on the patient's build. Lower for obese patient and higher for thin patient. How much you adjust the machine control and settings as you scan is very much better of test. This image shows the position of the patient for evaluation of biceps brachii muscle. Keep the patient's arm in a neutral position, hand resting on the thigh and elbow flexed to 90 degrees. The tendon can be readily identified in the intertubercular groove between the greater tubercle and lesser tubercle. This image shows probe placement to examine long head of biceps tendon in transverse plane and longitudinal plane. The hypoechoic appearance of the biceps tendon with area of increased Doppler signal as a result of tendon opening. This image shows transverse scan of torn long head of biceps tendon with an empty bicepital group. Longitudinal scan shows the convex superior margin of the retracted muscle belly, also called Popeye chain. The below image shows fluid noted along the tendon of the biceps. This image shows the position of the patient for subscapularis muscle evaluation. The arm is passively externally rotated and elbow flexed to 90 degree. The subscapularis can be examined in orthogonal plan. The subscapularis can be seen emerging inferior to the coracoid process and inserting on the laser tuberosity. Image A shows the transducer position for a transverse image of subscapularis tendon. Image B shows corresponding transverse image of the subscapularis tendon. Note the hyperechoic tendon slips between the hypoechoic muscle fibers. Image C shows short axis view of the subscapularis tendon with a partial thickness articular surface tear in its superior part. This image shows the position of the patient for evaluation of supraspinatus muscle. To visualize the supraspinatus muscle, the patients are asked to place their hand on their back pocket. This image shows longitudinal view of the supraspinatus tendon with an area of reduced echogenicity due to any sort of trophy at the site of tendon insertion over the greater tuberosity, which is not to be confused with a tear. A full thickness rotator cuff tear is a defect in the tendon that reaches from the bursal to the articular margin. Typically, these tears occur at the footprint of the greater tuberosity where the tendon fibers insert and then propagate proximally. Full thickness rotator cuff tears are qualified as small less than 1 cm, medium 1 to 3 cm, large 3 to 5 cm and massive more than 5 cm according to DOEO and COVID classification. Measured in its longest dimension. The normal tendon echogenicity is replaced by a hypoechoic or anechoic defect and the length or degree 
of retraction of a full thickness steel in width is assessed since this information is needed by orthopedic surgeon for deciding management and to prognostical outcome of the therapy when fluid is present in the subacromial subdeltoid bursa and the glenohumeral joint the probability of a rotator cuff tear is 95% Other indirect signs of a partial or full thickness rotator cuff tears are the sagging of bursa and the bright aspect of the humeral cartilage, which is caused by enhancement of the USG signal due to fluid and loss of cuff tissue above the cartilage. A complete tear of the tendon involves the wall width of the tendon. A full thickness tear may be complete or may only involve the anterior free edge or mid substance. The massive cut tear occur when the entire attachment of supraspinatus to the greater tuberosity is disrupted, allowing the tendon to retract proximally beneath the acromion. These tears may extend to involve the infraspinatus, subscapularis, and the long hand of biceps. Figure 7 image shows longitudinal view of the supraspinatus tendon, which shows full thickness tear of the tendon that reaches from the bursal to the articular margin with sagging of the overlying bursa. Image B shows long axis view of the right supraspinatus muscle, partial thickness articular surface tear, and a bright anterior aspect of the humeral cartilage, also called cartilage interfering spine. Figure 8 image A shows full thickness tear in the anterior free edge of the supraspinatus tendon. Tiny echogenic shadows due to blood particles are seen to move on dynamic compression. Note irregularity over the greater tuberosity. Image B shows short axis view of left supraspinatus tendon. This is a full thickness tear in the mid portion of the tendon with sagging of the overlying bursa. Partial thickness tear. Partial thickness tear is a focal discontinuation which is limited to tears affecting either side of the articular surface or the bursal surface of the tendon, but without communication of the tear to the opposing tendon surface. Partial thickness tears have been classified by Elvin by the depth of the tear as grade 1 for tears less than 3 mm, grade 2 for tears 3 to 6 mm, and grade 3 for the tears greater than 6 mm. This can also be divided into high grade, greater than 50% thickness, or low grade, less than 50% thickness. A cortical bone irregularity of the greater tuberosity is a sens sensitive sign of articular side partial thickness tear. Occasionally, a partial tear may propagate proximally within the tendon surface substance, causing a delaminating tear. A rim rent tear is a articular surface tear near the footprint of the tendon this image shows partial thickness tear of supraspinatus tendon image a shows short axis view there is a partial thickness articular surface tear in the mid substance of the tendon with a few intact fibers overlying image b shows partial thickness bursal surface tear of the supraspinatus tendon Image D shows partial thickness intrasubstance tear. Image D shows partial tear of supraspinatus tendon at the greater tuberosity. This pie chart suggests percentage of the pathology in shoulder pain. 40% is because of supraspinatus tear. 26% is because of joint effusion. 13% is because of tendinosis. 9% is because of bursitis. 4% is because of infraspinatus tear and 2% is because of biceps tear. 70% is contains partial thickness tear and 30% full thickness tear. The USG image quality has substantially improved with technological advancement, producing spatial resolution exceeding that obtaining with MRI. USG gives the ability to provide direct correlation of the imaging finding with the symptoms of the patient and helps with guiding interventional procedures. Thank you.